This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day, everybody. Welcome to the show. I've got a conversation with Calico Cooper and Chuck Garrick to share with you. Now, Calico is the daughter of legendary frontman and vocalist Alice Cooper, and Chuck has been his bassist for many years, as he was the bassist for the great, the late great Ronnie James Dio. Now, together, they have a group called Bisto Blanco, which is a catalyst for our chat. They've got a new single. It's called Run For Your Life, taken from the forthcoming album Kinetica. Of course, we talk all about the single, the album, performance art, touring. It's all there. And eventually, we do get to some stuff about Alice and Dio as well now i do have that track to share with you run for your life but only if you've tuned in via the podcast apps here it is once it's done you'll hear from calico and chuck for you people on youtube you know the drill can't play music on the platform so we'll dive into the chat straight away either way let's go heard run for your life okay so awesome track i enjoyed a lot i'm an old school rock metal fan so i love the fact that it's got uh you've kept the group's signature raw energy and power now i understand that the inspiration behind the song is it's a message about facing fears and trusting instincts so why was it important to sing about that well i think it's important for us to you know send a message that we can actually, you know, um, attest to, I think, uh, with Bisto Blanco and, and, and being an artist, uh, you know, there's all types of different, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say fears, but just challenges, obstacles, things like that that come across that, um, 
you know, we have to that just challenge us. Um, and I also want to be in a position to where um, if um, I don't believe it, I, I'm not going to be able to sing it, you know, so it has to be true to uh, the person I am or the person that we are as a band. Uh, we we got to really stand behind the lyrics that we're singing and whether it's a, a message about you know, running for your life and, you know, facing your fears and just breaking down a few walls or, you know, pushing a few people out of the way if you have to, to get to what you, where you want to go. Or if it's, you know, simply about, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, having, having, uh, having just the everyday courage to um, just, you know, just get up and be motivated. And and that's really what, what the, the song is about. Um, so I want to be able to believe in the the lyrics, basically, mm. in the short term. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Calico, on the whole thing? I think um, when we were writing it, I remember thinking like, wow, what a unique take on strength, right? Because we always have this like adage of like, face your fears, turn around, run into the tidal wave. <laughs> and it's like, I I picture, you know, like, first man right the first time that volcano exploded and he grabbed his kids and just <laughs> tearing away and it's not weakness it's like wow that's survival and so i think um the message kind of became more one of of like survival than the kind of typical like punch a lion in the face you know what i mean like it's like hey man like we're hardwired to survive. And a lot of us have gotten so beat down that we're just like, these are my circumstances. I don't, I can't. And it's like the song for me starts kicking <clears throat> in those turbines in my brain. That's like, no, I can get up after that last punch and keep going and, and run and keep running. And it's, you know, coincidentally an amazing treadmill song. I highly suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Look, the video is very visceral as well. So, were you were you both integral to the concept? In other words, did you actually provide a lot of the art direction? Well, when I directed the video and came up with the entire thing myself, <laughs> uh, I had no help from anybody. It was genius, and uh, no, um, actually, Calico uh, can speak on behalf of the uh, video. She. Um, it was it was her idea, her concept, uh, her direction, her wardrobe. Um, she pointed us in the direction, and uh, we're all on board. The, the one thing we do is we all know each other's strengths in this band, um, and um, and we also know, uh, you know, we also are not afraid to when somebody has an idea. Um, doesn't really matter who came up with it or what. If it's a great idea, it's a great idea, and then you're going to get full support from everyone around you. Um, so we just tried to provide that for Calico. Yeah, go. I think I was I was really inspired by um like with a lot of our videos, I, I kind of started taking the reins around uh the last record when it came to visuals with like the seeker. Cause when I heard that song, I just pictured like I get a lot of my ideas when I'm driving through the desert and I just uh -huh. zone out because you're going, you know, 80 miles an hour just zoned out and I like like literal visions. And so like I was seeing this girl in a in a long nightgown and she was all beat up and she was running through the desert and it just my mind went like what is she running from who is she where is she going and I would just listen to the song on repeat until the story just played out in my mind like a movie and so very similar um when we were recording Run for Your Life uh in Germany um I was just seeing like this clock ticking down to an explosion like run for your life because of this explosion and then from that kind of like nucleus the story of like who we are and how we fit into it kind of like just popped out and and you know when you tell somebody a group of people you go hey so we're not just gonna play instruments um oh. on a stage uh i'm gonna get a spaceship and we're going to do all these special effects and like stunts and whatever. And and most people would go, that's nice, dear. Um, but I have a lot of support in, they know that I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. So they don't ask a bunch of questions like, where are you going to get a spaceship or who are you going to shoot? That's going to let you, you know, shoot them six feet in the air. And I say, why don't you let me worry about that? 
(laughs) But yeah, um, I was really inspired by like, kind of like mid eighties sci-fi movie of the weeks. Yeah. And I think that there was something so special about those to me when I was a kid, like I loved them. I loved the practical effects and and the monster fingers and, and the whole thing. So, you know, when I put it together in my head, I wanted it lit very like mid eighties, um, thing I wanted the big turns to be the slow motion dramatic big turns and and um you know when you're making something like that it is very modern and you're in the moment and you're going I don't know if I captured it and then when I was editing it I go oh nope we got it <laughs> <laughs> okay gotcha now with regards to the album I haven't heard the rest of the album yet but I understand it's called Kinetica is that right it is I- uh and to this point we only have the single out Okay. Yeah. Um, so the single is dropped. Um, you know, we have I think another single potentially two, but then the whole record will drop, and it's um, it's something, man. We did we did eleven videos for eleven songs. Oh, what, oh my God! Where do you find the energy to do that? That's huge. The, mostly this, but yeah. otherwise, <laughs> there's actually tequila in there. Um, huh. No, but I. Uh, I want it so bad. I, I, so I think as an artist, um, one of the things that, you know, might sound cheesy, but is a hundred percent true for me is that I desperately want you to see what's happening in here. Um, mm-hmm. and I can't do it with words. I'm not great at, um, expressing like these kind of like vision visuals. And so when I tell Chuck or the label or whoever, I have this idea and I garble my words and I, and I, but, but, and I can see that they're going, Okay. And through music and through these videos, um, I can give you like a look at like what's happening in my, in my brain. And it it gets, it gets me off for some reason. I I love it when somebody goes, Oh my gosh, that moved me in some way. I go, good, good. Like I, I want that. And so, um, you know, Chuck is writing this music that's really easy to, um, to create to, you know, Mm. and, um, this was the first record too that I really got in on the writing process. And I, you know, spearheaded like, I think like three or four of the songs and wrote the majority of the lyrics for those. And, and having now that arrow in my, in my kit, I'm going, what? I have unlimited power. (laughs) (laughs) I can write what I want to do. And, and so, yeah, I mean, for me, it, it, the 11 songs for 11, videos just was like a dream come true to be able to even attempt that was was amazing yeah gotcha look we also live in an era where forget about technology that's been there now for too long to mention mm-hmm. but artificial intelligence whether it be Dali mm-hmm. or chat gpt these types of applications so did you use any of them to help you with the creative process no i i uh have just been introduced to it myself and i I'm blown away at what is capable, what it's capable of. But I think it, it, in my opinion, it's a great tool, but it ultimately can't execute. You know, it can, it can line up my ideas and it can show me what it thinks I'm talking about. But one of the most comforting things as an artist is, uh, you know, I was, I was trying to explain one of my ideas to the guys and to the label. And I wasn't, able to find anything on the internet that was what I was talking about. And so I got onto, you know, the, the AI thing and I, and I typed in all the words and it just couldn't get it. It just couldn't get exactly what was happening. It was close, but not exactly it. And so I think it's a magnificent tool. And, um, but you know, I'm a sucker for practical effects. All of our, our cuts and bruises are real. Um, our explosions when i sh- if you watch the run for your life video when i shoot that guy mm. it's um it's a literal practical explosion like we didn't use CGI. <laughs> um much to his chagrin i'm sure but um you know i blew him away for real uh but uh, i think there's a magic there and that's something mm. that you know chuck and i have learned after years of doing live live shows you know with dio and alice and things um you really cannot not do it you mm. got to do it yeah. i think yeah you think, both, yeah, yeah you're both in the really? old school that's great yeah sorry chuck you go man 
No, I, I think regarding the AI thing, I, I think Calico nailed it. You know, it is a it's a it's a starter uh, for some things. You know, it could be a lot of people are using it for maybe starting for lyrics or a starter for visuals or things like that. But the end is there's no replacing human feel, human touch, uh, expression, emotion. Um, you know, I'd, I'd really find it quite interesting and then we may be in a completely different different time if you can ask a computer or ai right we, we talked about this this is the fear was when it can really give you a human emotion a human feeling maybe a, a an actual circumstance uh there's been a lot of things that have happened to us in our lives that are in, in bisto especially that have been all really great and wonderful and some things that are hard and and heavy and deep um, uh, so I, I, I think that, uh, we're, we're moving into that age, uh, flawlessly and, and easily, but we're also really at the end of it, we rely solely on, on our ability as musicians and songwriters to, to mm. finish the project. Yeah. Yeah. As a platform, as a type of technology, it reminds me of where musicians and creators were at in the late seventies and early eighties where, mm when you go back and listen to a lot of that music and that those watch those movies, now they look like shit and they sound yeah. like shit and we're at that point. So we're probably about 20 or 30 years away from it actually having, a, I want to say meaningful and impact mm-hmm. on a way where it's, it's, it's seamless from the perspective that you don't notice that it's there as much. At the moment, you've got mm-hmm. artists that are out there, bands in particular, I mean, that are using AI to create album covers. Deicide, for example, recently did it with theirs, and it doesn't doesn't look good, guys. Nope. And, yeah, yeah I, I don't know why they're going down that route because uh, yeah. you, you, we can all do it aware of my phone is. We can all do it on our phones now if we really want and come up with something, yeah. but it just looks eh. Yeah, one of the I remember trying to to come up with uh, with our album cover, and I I typed in. Um, like all these these keywords and i mean i felt like a little old man in <laughs> shock when i saw what came back because i mean i thought oh it's gonna look like this the intricacy of what got sent back to me i was like what you know yeah. what i mean like it it's really mind-blowing and and i mean i think it's it's a um it's a tricky we were just having this huge conversation about um how much pressure gets put on artists to do the newest thing um, mm-hmm. and how much you're going to play ball and whether that's like, you know, having a, this kind of production or this kind of producer or like whatever, or like, you know, posting 30 times a week. Like there's a bunch of stuff that I feel like my, my body and my brain is like, Oh no, I don't want that. Cause I don't want to see that. But then I have to go, okay, I cannot get old man fossil brain and be like, that doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like I have to try and see what is happening. And I agree with you. I I think looking at an AI cover, there's something missing. Mm. There's something that even photography, like if you take a great photograph, you did an AI of my face right now. It would look just like me, but there's something here that's gone. The humanity you know. is absent. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, gotcha. Yeah. What about in terms of the performance side of things? I'd love to watch you guys. Okay. And, <laughs> and there's there's so much going on. There's so much energy there. And you you're playing these huge European festivals. Well, I know you play, I'll ask the question. You're playing Varken or Wacken, is that correct? Yeah, yeah I think Varken they said Varken, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. So is, is that new for you? Have you played there before? Yes, not as Bisto Blanco. We haven't played there before. So this will be our first time as a, as as the band Bisto Blanco playing Vakin, yeah. Mm. But you've done it as uh, you've done it with uh with either Alice or with Dio, I think. From exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 I mean that's a that's a full on probably the biggest heavy metal festival in existence, that one there. Maybe the mm-hmm. best too, I've got to say. So yeah. it's d- massive. Yeah, are you having to do a full production for that? Well, well I think we on. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Kel. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say we do um we've been lucky enough to play uh, you know, have some some great 
spots uh, touring in arenas uh, with Bisto. And so we now know the difference between, um, logically, we know the difference between uh, what we what we have on a club stage, a theater stage, and an arena stage. But to be honest, you can't tell us nothing. So we basically have a monster show in mm. a club or a theater. Um, you know, I'm building something right now that requires soldering just, you know, so we get like an idea of what we're doing. Like, um, Bisto is, and if you look up, like there's a lot of, of stuff of us live. Um, there's really not a lot of, um, of fear of non-acceptance. You know what I mean? We are so going to bring to you what we are. And Mm. we've had such good reaction to that. Like no matter what country we're in, um, you know, I, I think so for these big arena shows, I'm so glad we've had the experience of doing, you know, we did um, a bunch of arena shows. We've done a ton of of, uh, theater shows and with bands that aren't exactly our genre, which is such a good learning experience. Like, you know, when Bisto gets in a bunch of metal fans, like we did um, the Mega Cruise. And so it was like Suicidal Tendencies, Corrosion of Conformity, Bisto Blanco. Um, It works because I get the vibe of the audience and I see their faces and I just reflect it back. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and it, and it's authentic. So it works. And then when we're playing something a little more fun, you know, like monsters of rock and where it's like a little more glam and, and whatever, I'll turn that up a little bit. There's a little more yeah. wink in what I'm doing. Um, it's pretty versatile. So doing this run uh, and doing these big festivals like Vakken, I cannot wait because a, I mean, it's kind of genetic. It runs in the in the DNA. I, my whole body is electric when I see that many people, and it's not fear. It's like oh, I'm alive. Like I love it. Mm. I adore it. And I and I, I just yeah, I'm so excited. And we're bringing all new like stuff that adds to the music, but isn't like a a like a hey, look over here. We don't have a very good song, so we're gonna do this bit. It's like what a great song and what a cool thing to do with these lasers or, you know, whatever it is. So I'm stoked to do Vakken, but we're definitely doing our set with our harder, harder songs. No ballads for Vakken. (laughs) You know, the thing is with Bisto too, like regarding Vakken, full production, you know, maybe not full production. It doesn't, we're, we're a a theatrical band just as the, as the five of us on stage. There's mm. so much to look at. There's so much to watch. We're we're re- really entertaining group of people. We 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 love what we do. We love these songs. We love being on stage, and, and we love the energy we get feeding off of the crowd. So mm. I, I've always felt like um, you know all of those stuff, all the, the the theatrics, which are great. They're 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 a really nice bonus to all this other just amazing uh, chemistry going on on stage. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, now, Chuck, for you, just with your legacy with Dio, do you, do, is there anything that you do to honor the great man's work and your your contribution to his work in the band? Hey, wow! I mean, you know what a what a wonderful experience that was, and and what an honor it was to work with Ronnie and and the, and the boys, Wendy as well. Um, you know, Ronnie really taught me a lot about how to be professional. Um, I. Um, I didn't have as many years of touring experience and uh, I, uh, I had to earn my stripes quickly with him. Um, he really taught me how to be professional, how to be um, really good every night. Like, you know, mistakes just were not something that he was going to accept because uh, he was just, that guy was on it every night. Uh, and not only that, but uh, he was really fun to be around. He was very encouraging. So every, mm-hmm. every day, before I go on stage, I really take time to to just acknowledge Ronnie and, and the gratitude I have for him and a, a little nod. And and I, I feel like, um, you know, he's got a, a, a place, uh, you know, to himself here in my metal heart, if you will. You know, Ronnie really, um, really shaped me and changed me. And I'm forever grateful. There you go. Yeah. And what what about for you, Calico? Gr- growing up in your household, was it did it feel like an inevitability that you'd be a performer? Um, you hit it on the head when you said performer. I think, um, especially as the oldest kid, you look for hmm. um a place 
to be unique, right? And and a lot of people go, oh, my parents were um, a school teacher and a firefighter or or whatever, and then their their uniqueness comes from I'm going to be a musician or an actor or, or whatever. Uh, for me, I was sort of born into it, and uh, you know, over here, I don't, I don't know if it's it's so much there, but you know, they laugh about nepo babies over here about how easy it is for them, and I think I might have a unique take on it um as far as like if you take the word nepo out and you replace it with family business Mm. you know if your dad's in tire sales and you got brought up around tire sales and you take over the tire tire sale business people aren't like nepo tire baby nepo kid you're like i took over the family i don't know um but i do agree that you know kids in, in my position have a lot of advantages but i don't think that gives you the excuse to not work your ass off i don't think that gives you the excuse to just sort of accept what comes your way. So for me, I, um, I wanted to work hard. I wanted to earn it. Um, and I wanted to find something in entertainment that wasn't exactly what my parents were doing. So, you know, it's like, at first I go, Oh, I I don't know. I don't want to be in a band. It's not really whatever. And I was, you know, acting and doing TV and and film and I still Mm. am. Um, and then Chuck brought this idea to me where he's like, what if all the ideas that you ever had, he's like, Satan, could come true? What if you could do whatever you wanted? And I was I, like, yes, Satan. Um, so really, I, I learned to sing in the process. I always could, you know, just by, I don't know if it's genetic or just luck. I don't, I don't know. But being in Bisto taught me all these different voices that I have. Like in Run For Your Life, there's this huge scream that I didn't know I could do until I was in the the booth because mm-hmm. the, the the lyric was supposed to be like just carry run for your life and I ran out of breath and so I just shrieked the rest of it out and I went <laughs> oh my god and Chuck and and Chris Harms the producer were like <laughs> and so I was like I did that that was me so um. <laughs> Yeah, learning new stuff about about that voice. And, you know, I'm really encouraged by my dad. You know, he uh, he's so um, does it right in the way of he gives me feedback. He's really into it, but he's not calling up, you know, Vakken and going, hey, can you get my kid in? We busted our asses to get there. And, you know, I was just going to say. Yeah, you know? everything that we've gotten, you know, is is from from hard work. And if you happen to know us from the years that both of us toured with Alice, or the years Chuck did Dio, or the countless amount of like BS acting jobs that I like slung and hashed out just to like make mm. a make a name for myself. Um, if you still want to say it's because of that, okay. I don't know if I joke. I'm not gonna fight you, but come see us and then you tell me. Yeah. If we have it or not. Yeah. Oh, you definitely got it. I've seen the live videos. There's no question about that. But that's <laughs> it seems to be the fate of um a lot of people in your position, Calico, where that accusation of nepotism just seems to be hand in glove with success, doesn't it? I'm just talking about the yeah, accusation it'll sink you. of it. It's 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 odd. Yeah, it'll sink you, man. Um, I think. I think all people really want to do, um, this is my Ted talk. I think, uh, all people really want to do is be heard, you know? And I think, uh, if it makes you feel better, uh, that you're struggling to say that, you know, my success comes only from the success of my parents. Um, I get that man. Like I feel that way too. Secretly. Sometimes I see people in my position, um, and we all know, you know, social media is smoke and mirrors, whatever, but I'm guilty of looking at my peers and going, how do they get these jobs? How are they doing this? And I'll wring my thumbs and call Chuck and go, it's not fair. I'm working so hard just to be told when I do get a success, ah, you just got that because of whatever. So I think mm. you got to have enough sense of self to go, I know how hard I worked. I know that I did 10,000 hours in repertory Shakespeare theater. I know Mm -hmm. that I worked my ass off to learn everything. And I'm not mad at you if you don't like me 
Um, I can't help my, my birthright, but what I can do is promise you that I am going to work my ass off for everything that I get. And then with any success that I have, I try to help other people. You know, if, if there's a band that I know that's really good and just not getting where they need to get, if I can put you in front of someone or put you in touch with someone, I will. I'm not a gatekeeper. I, I want to help, mm. but just try to not push my face in the mud in the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you're both doing an admirable job regardless. And uh, so I'll make this my final question for you. Australia, have you been here and are you planning on coming down? Well, the Go plan on. is to come there as Bisto Blanco. We have not had the opportunity. At one point, right before COVID, we were supposed to go. We had uh, gotten an offer. Uh, it didn't uh, work out, obviously. But um, our goal now is uh, to get over there as, you know, as, as soon as we possibly can. Doing these interviews and, and getting the word out there is really helping. So, um, you know, short answer is yes. We want to get to Australia sooner than later. And we've been a ton of times with Alice. You know, I'm I'm lucky enough to have gone and and seen some things that I, I don't think can ever be replicated. The beauty of that country is truly like it's breathtaking. And um having experiences there that I I can't even like describe to people. They go, How is Australia? I go, okay. <laughs> I'm going to need AI for this uh, yeah. and like try to like <laughs> explain it. But yeah, I love, I love Australia and I would love to come back with Bisto. You know, they receive Alice always ah. so well, great fans and um, great to hang out with after the show, by the way. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic guys. Well, thanks very much for the conversation. I'm very happy to do my bid here for you and uh, hopefully thanks, we'll man. see you down here soon. So good luck and God bless. All right, dude. See you then. I can't wait. Absolutely. No worries. Catch Thank you. you so much, Andrew. Look forward okay. to talking bye. to you again. We'll see you soon, bro. Thanks, Chuck. See Thanks, you. Guys. See Cheers, bye. guys. Bye. 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 Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. Another episode done and dusted. What a fantastic pair. Calico Cooper, the daughter of the great Alice Cooper, and Chuck Garrick, his bass player, who incidentally, as you heard, was also Dio's bassist there. Wow. A connection to the past. All right, so that's it from me. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and I'm the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast. Until the next one, it's a goodbye for now.